I actually did went and go take a look at that I, Isaiah 42. So if I, if you don't mind, maybe we can go over that real quick since it's uh, kind of on the topic. Um, as far well, actually no, it's not on the topic because uh, well, who do you believe? Cool, Isaiah, no who, who do you believe Isaiah 42 to be about? Well, I mean, I think that's beyond the point that I was going to try to make because whether even if it wasn't about Jesus, that wouldn't automatically make it about Muhammad. And that was part of my contention is that when I was reading the whole chapter, I mean, I can see how somebody's going to throw Jesus in there for sure. But um, some of the things that subs- that is given to the the servant, I I don't see how how that can be how that could be Muhammad. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let's go over like I studied that text uh, thoroughly. Okay, all right. So Isaiah 42 talks about a uh, servant of God, right, who will mm-hmm. receive a spirit. Now remember, you have to remove the trinitarian uh, lens, which we read the text with. Just read it objectively. Spirit means a prophet. Spirit means an angel. Spirit means only a person of the Trinity. That's if you consider the doctrine of Trinity, which is absent. Uh, at least from a Jewish perspective. I remember, this is, all, this is Isaiah speaking, right? Because he does not know that God has three persons. Mm-hmm. Because he worships one God. Just, he didn't know that three persons, he didn't know that a human God is going to come. But again, that's that's aside. Some people might argue Isaiah 53 is about Jesus. I don't want to get into that. Okay, so this person is receiving something from God. Who is this person? Servant of God, right? Verse 4, it says he's going to have his own law, his own Torah. He will bring his own Torah. Now remember, who's speaking? Isaiah. Isaiah is after Moses, so he's definitely not speaking about the Torah of Moses. He's saying he's bringing his own law, his own Sharia, his own Torah. Which Torah? And you're, the Gentiles, and you're saying that in verse. You're saying that's in verse four. Yeah, verse four. It says what is Torah to? The uh, what version are, they, are you reading so I could come with you? Four, so four. I could use the same. No, I what version? Four. Any version. Oh, look, I'm, I'm, I read the Hebrew. I don't read it. I don't. I, I stop reading in English to be honest with you because. There's so many translations, bro. Like, when he's saying his judgments, his teachings, he's that. And, and they confuse people. But look at the words in Hebrew there. You're going to find the word Torah to, to his Torah, the nations will be waiting for. So this servant of God will bring in, bring in a new law. Not the okay, Mosaic law. So what are you, where are you getting the new part from? That's what I'm confused. Because it's the servant's law. And the servant is not Moses. Right. Right. So this is so servant's law. because it's a Torah. new person you're saying? Yeah, it's a, it's a servant of God. He's talking about a prophecy, right? You say it's about Jesus. So I, it's, it's, if it's a prophecy, and it's Isaiah, so he's not going to talk about the past. He's going to talk about the future, right? Right, right, yeah. For exactly. Sure. So it's not about Moses, obviously. It's about a servant of God right. who will have a Torah. Which Torah? That the goyim, that the nations will be waiting for. Remember, the Torah of right. Moses was for the Israelites. So this is specific. this is a specific set of laws that God will put through his servants through his spirit, which is the angel, we believe is Archangel Gabriel, and we'll have this servant will bring the Torah to the nations. Now, now we're going to see later whether the Prophet Muhammad fit this criteria, whether Jesus, peace be upon him, whether all, the, whether anyone you want. So, so far, servant of God, receive revelation from God, he will speak what God tells him to say, and he will have uh, his law for what? Universal, for all. Not only for Israelites, for all. You keep reading further, now you have a description of a geographic location. You have Mount Salah, and with the letter Ain in Arabic, cognate of Hebrew, Ain. What is a mountain? If you look it up, it's in Medina, right? Salah also means rock, but it, in this context, it doesn't mean just rock, people of the rock. It's not like some people hanging out at some rock. No, it's talking about a certain mountain, and we have historical evidence of who went to those people. Furthermore, it's talking about the Kedarites. Kedar, based on Genesis 25, is the second son of Ishmael. It's also a reference to Arabia. That's where the Ishmael and his descendants live, in Arabia, in Mecca, which is Paran. Right? How do you know that? Go back to Genesis. That it says that Hagar and her son Ismail lived in the wilderness of Paran, Mecca. And we know no one debates this. Everyone knows the Arabs lived in Mecca and in Arabia. So, okay. And now it says that this servant of God, he will not be satisfied. He will not fail. He will not cry in the markets, and he will defeat his enemies. He will trouble his enemies, and will wipe idolatry out of the whole region. Okay. So these are the criteria that this servant of God, as he verse two, is doing. Right. Now, let's see whether the Prophet Muhammad or Jesus, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon them both, which one from the criteria, or can bring anybody else who you think might fit the criteria. We see that Jesus never been to Arabia. We see that Jesus did not bring a new law, 
right? He followed. He said, I did not come to change the law. I came to fulfill it. He literally followed the law of Moses, right? We see that he did not fight anybody. He did not trample his enemies. As a matter of fact, the Christian narrative is the complete opposite. He, he was overpowered and got killed by his enemies. So we see the Prophet Jesus about him did not fit that criteria. Now let's see Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Received the word of God via the archangel Gabriel, right? He was a servant of God indeed, right? He brought a new law in the Quran, the Sharia. The only universal law that we have is to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Moses brought the law to the Israelites. Jesus followed that law. Which prophet in mankind brought a new law, which we call in Arabic Sharia, a path? None other than the Prophet Muhammad. Now let's see the geographic location. Surprise, surprise. Where is this servant of God? Guess what? He's from the Kedarites, Kedar, Arabia. Lives in Paran, right? And we have evidence that he came to Mount Salah in Medina. So now... So now we have the servant of God who came to the Arabs, Kedarites, made the people of Kedar rejoice, people of Salah, Medina rejoice, brought a new law, claimed to be prophet of God, came to all mankind, and his law is universal to all mankind. He had geographical, and he won a trump over his enemies. He wiped and deleted all idolatry out of Arabia. Literally, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu fulfilled the criteria to the T. There's no man on earth. No man on earth. Literally, only the blind person will, will uh, reject this prophecy and attribute it to some, somebody else. I'd like to say this before I finish, that we have, Muslim, we have Muslims have no issue at all if this is about Jesus or about anybody else. Because guess what? Jesus is our prophet. He's been peace and be upon him. That will make us happier than see prophecies about Jesus. We have to be realistic and neutral. And we see that Prophet Muhammad fulfilled exactly the criteria. Description, geographic location, uh, winning over his enemies, bringing a new law, Universe, everybody else? And I'm done over here. Mike is yours, bro. All right. Um, okay, yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I see the connection. I have to look up uh, into those uh, those places, but I'm not, I'm not saying I doubt you. I just, I do have to look more into the places. And um, I guess some of the, okay. Um, okay, so some of the reasons why I, I'm not seeing this being Muhammad is um, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to jump back. I'm going to go and study some more. Look, I'm going to look more into it and make sure I get a full breakdown before I, um, yeah, I appreciate that. Because a lot of what you're saying, I I understand it is making sense. So I'm not, I don't want to discard it. So I'm, I'm going to look more into it. I do want to bring it up at another time. So, I do appreciate um, your okay, sincerity. Then, yeah, I appreciate your breakdown. And, uh...